Hi, my name is Peyton Knoll. Our next speaker in the red circle is a Lakeland University graduate who also holds the title of husband, father, mentor, adjunct faculty member, community outreach member, and community volunteer. All these titles share one thing in common, the need to lead. Please welcome Jamie Schramm. The key to igniting your leadership ability and your leadership passion is to lead yourself well before trying to lead other people. Lead myself well. You might be thinking, Jamie, that sounds kind of selfish. Maybe even a little self-focused. And it might feel that way initially, but it's never born out of self-interest, and it certainly is never self-serving. You know, leaders come in all shapes and sizes, just like all of you gathered here today and that are live streaming our event, our unique individuals. There is not a one-size-fits-all approach to leadership. We have some great examples of leadership from our private sector, our public sector, our sports world and leading teams, and the brave men and women who put on our nation's uniform and serve in our military. You know, I have the honor and privilege of meeting and talking with a lot of leaders, and leaders in the beginning of their career, the middle of their career, and then at the end of their career. And I hear many of them share a similar message. They want the what they do to expand. They want to have a bigger impact, make a difference. And I think the important key leadership principle that they miss is that the what you do is determined by the who you are. And if you don't lead yourself first, and expand who you are, you never get to the what. And the message that I hear them saying, and the way that looks and what it looks like, is the leaders who are laser focused on the what, and forget about the who, they're standing in the spotlight. They're taking a picture, and they're always standing next to the right people in that picture. Maybe even have their arm around the CEO at the company picnic. And the message and what they say to us is, look at what I have done. But oh, what a more powerful leadership example it would be for the rest of us if they were to say, look at who I have become. You know, I think we live in a world with constant change, and sometimes that change creates anxiety for us and fear for us. But I think if we were to look at the themes of leadership, we would see some consistency, whether we're leading in 1850, 1950, or 2018. And this historical perspective of leadership we hear this in the sports world all the time. Who is the greatest of all time? Who is the greatest point guard in basketball of all time? Is it points scored, number of game-winning shots made? Who is the greatest quarterback of all time? Was it touchdown passes thrown, yards thrown for? But this conversation always seems to culminate around one theme. And that one theme that it always culminates around, who is the greatest of all time, is which one of these players made their team better? elevated the player of their teammates. And which one of these players, who's the greatest of all time, when the outcome was uncertain, when the game was on the line, was the player who said, give me the ball. And they didn't say, give me the ball in a selfish way. They said, give me the ball so I can help our team win. And that greatest point guard of all time or that greatest quarterback of all time, they maybe didn't even take that game-winning shot. They maybe didn't even carry that football across the goal line but they got it to their teammate who would and who would help their team win. The greatest of all time is that player who through their own efforts and willing to, be, willing to take the risk of leadership elevates the play of their team. Sometimes leadership takes on this conversation of an either-or conversation. Either you're the traditional leader, got your chest puffed out, stiff upper lip, square jaw, never let them see you sweat. Or you're the type of leader who are very servant-oriented, all about the team. And I think we do ourselves a disservice when we talk about leadership in an either-or realm. And I'm here to tell you today, it's an and conversation. I think they both got it right. I think they both have things to add to this conversation around the topic of leadership. It's just a matter of how and when you apply it. You know, I said igniting your leadership starts with leading yourself well. And while it may become self-focused, we don't want it to become self-serving or born of self-interest. How are we going to do that? A few themes I would like to share with you. You need to like who you see in the mirror. You need to be your biggest champion. If you won't be your biggest champion, who will? We need to fine-tune those voices in our head. You know, the people in our inner circle, our closest family and friends, 
They're not in our lives by mistake. And we need to make our own finish lines. You know, we all have one thing in common in this life we're blessed with. We all have one final finish line. And none of, it, none of us know when it's coming. So let's dive in a little deeper. Like who I see in the mirror. You know, that leader you see in the mirror every morning is counting on you. You need to be your biggest champion. If I can't say, if I cannot look in the mirror in the morning and say, you know, Jamie, you probably screwed some things up in your life and you haven't done everything perfect, but you know what? You're going to be all right and things are going to be all right. If you can't generate that kind of self-confidence in yourself, how can you go inspire confidence in others? Be your biggest champion. Maybe even idolize yourself a little bit, right? And while you're doing that, being your biggest champion, can you also, on some level, be your most honest critic? Wow, imagine that. A powerful set of tools for leading yourself well. I am simultaneously my biggest champion and my most honest critic. And at some point, if I can't be my biggest champion and I can't be my most honest critic during my career and my life, do I become my biggest lie? Fine-tuning those voices in our head. You know, the people who you seek out their affirmation, you want their approval, their opinion matters to you, they are not in your life by mistake. They are in your life because you chose to put them there. That is a very personal choice we all make. And that choice sends a powerful message to the rest of the world. What message are you sending by the people who you allow in your inner circle? For all your greatest successes in life, your closest family and friends, they were there cheering you on. Oh boy, here it comes. For all your greatest regrets and mistakes in your life, your closest family and friends, they were there cheering you on. I'm a big advocate that we need to take inventory of the people in our inner circle. And for myself, for Jamie, I always imagine if I was running a 5K race, what that would look like. Who are the people in my inner circle if I was running a 5K race that when I got to the end of that race, they were there cheering me on, wanting me to seek my goal, almost willing me with their own energy across that finish line. And then who are the people that I, Jamie, allow in my inner circle that would be at that start line saying, Jamie, this is stupid. Why are you doing this? This is a waste of time. The people who you allow in your life and you choose to put there are there because you put them there. Choose wisely. The final thing I share with you is we need to make our own finish lines. As I mentioned, we all have that one finish line. It's the one thing we all share in common at the end of our lives. It's the one finish line in our lives we don't control. We don't get to set it, but it's coming. But I think throughout our lives, we set a lot of arbitrary finish lines. And some of those finish lines are very self-serving. And one of the things I hear people say, and I don't even think we realize we say it, it has become so cliche. I went the extra mile for him or her. I just don't get that. Can someone explain that to me? Do you mean that any one of us possesses some special skill that we know and we can define with clarity where mile one ends and mile two begins. For leaders, it's all about service. It's all about taking my greatest abilities, wisdom, and knowledge and pouring it into someone else. So it's okay for me to say today, I'm going to stop at mile one because you're not worth it. But tomorrow I'll consider going to mile two. I just never got that. We talk about service and sacrifice and commitment. We've got some great stories of leadership from the men and women who put on our nation's uniform and serve in our military. I'd like to share two of those stories with you. Two very personal stories. I know both of these people. One of them probably at the beginning of their career, just starting out, and one of them was nearing that end final finish line. First story I'd share with you is about my son, Zach. My son, Zach, graduated United States Marine Corps Boot Camp April 6, 2018. During his graduation ceremony, he had the honor and privilege of being interviewed by a reporter. She reporter wanted to know, why do young men and women make this choice to join the military? And she asked him, she said, Zach, through some of those most difficult times of boot camp, what was going through your head? And he said, you know, he said, at the end of Marine Corps boot camp, we have that 54-hour endurance test, the crucible. And as I was going up that final hill, at the end of that, that, that endurance test, the crucible, it had been raining for three days, we were cold, wet, tired. 
I heard a voice in my head. He said, in growing up, you probably don't always appreciate your dad's voice. Sometimes it goes in one ear and goes right out the other. But there it was. I heard my dad saying, you can't get to the top if you're not willing to be over the top. Be over the top. Strive for excellence. Do not accept mediocrity. Be over the top. Whatever game you're playing, whatever industry you're in, be the member on your team to say, give me the ball. Final story I'll share with you. It comes from a neighbor of mine, Tony. I knew Tony for about 25 years. Met him when I was in middle school. First day I met him, he always wore that same baseball cap his entire life. It said 5307 Composite Unit World War II. Going to become really important in a minute. Tony was nearing the end of his life, and I don't know if he realized it or we realized it, but one day there was a knock at the door. He called my son and I over to his house. And out in front of us, he had laid all the pictures, all the memorabilia, all the stories from his service in World War II. The 5307 composite unit in World War II is Merrill's Marauders. Every member of that unit won a bronze star for their service, sacrifice, courage, and bravery. Towards the end of that conversation, I asked Tony, I remember this so vividly, I said, Tony, you aren't getting any younger. What do you need my generation and my son's generation? What message would you want us to share? And he said, Jamie, I wake up at 3 in the morning. Here's the question I ask myself. What more could I have done? Here is this man in his late 80s at the end of his life, and he still hasn't determined where mile 1 ended and mile 2 begins. He doesn't know where the end finish line is, but he's going to keep pushing and accomplish one new mission every single day, right up until that final finish line. How inspiring. And the leadership message that I took away that day was leaders, leaders do not judge their success by feet or miles traveled or seconds or hours on a clock. They judge it by leading themselves well, taking all of their wisdom, knowledge, and experiences and sharing it to inspire others to do greatness. Thank you very much.